On January 22, Francis Ngannou was once again crowned the strongest man in the world. Facing the French Syrian gang, Ngannou, whom everyone calls the predator, was able to retain his heavyweight MMA title with authority despite a knee injury. Throw back on his extraordinary destiny from Batier to Los Angeles via Paris. Hello everyone, this is Soraya and you're watching a video by Bruce. Make sure you like, subscribe, share and drop a comment on the subject Francis Ngannou Return of the King. Francis Ngannou was born on September 5th, 1986 in Batier a mountainous region in West Cameroon. He had a difficult childhood along with his brothers and sisters as all were victims of their father's violence. Very quickly, Francis began to search for a job in order to be able to feed himself on a daily basis. He was only 10 years old when he started walking in the sand quarry. But his destiny led him to boxing when, at the age of 17, he started practicing this sport in a small club in Douala, the economic capital of Cameroon. He had no troubles getting started because his imposing stature made it easy for him to enter the boxing ring. In 2013, 10 years later, after a dangerous and long trip undertaken without letting his family know about it, he found himself in Paris, the French capital, penniless and in an illegal situation. He was then offered a home for migrants in order to get shelter and food. But Francis turned it down and voluntarily chose to live in the street. For him, these shelters are dirty and unhealthy. However, it was in that same city of light that Locke smiled upon him. He met Didier Camon, an MMA trainer, who allowed him to train for free in the MMA factory gym. Francis Ngannou thereof put boxing aside and focused on his MMA fighting skills. After a year of hard work, he made his debut in the discipline and in 2015, he obtained his first contract with the UFC, the most prestigious competition in MMA. His situation improved rapidly. He gained a temporary residence permit in France and a work visa for the United States. Thus, after being homeless for 10 years, the predator now lives in a sumptuous villa in Los Angeles and earns nearly 500,000 euros per fight. Philanthropist and true to his roots, Francis returned to Cameroon in 2019, where he founded the Francis Ngannou Foundation, a non-profit organization which aims is to provide Cameroonian children with skills they need to expand their horizons and achieve their dreams. The foundation opens the first fully equipped gymnasium in Cameroon, providing a place to train in various combat sports. Following his unanimous decision to win over Frenchman Cyril Glenn, Ngannou revealed his struggle with a cruciate ligament injury. Like Son Goku in the recovery tank, Ngannou is currently recovering from a knee surgery in the United States. He takes his time to get back in shape and prepare for his return to fighting. Actually at the top of his game, this injury to the Cameroonian champion is not a real obstacle to his ascent. In fact, the predator seems more determined 
than ever to come back stronger. He could even make a groundbreaking return with an unprecedented entry into boxing. This will allow him to obtain better finance in view of the risk incurred in each of his fights. But his return could also be made back in the UFC to cement himself more in the MMA's League of Legends. He currently spends his time in his recovery period between indoor cycling sessions and boxing training in the garden of his Las Vegas home. And he is being supported by his coach, the impressive Eric Nixie. All this therefore proves that Ngannou does not lose sight of his goals. The King's return could be the occasion for a clash of titans, a kind of rumble in the jungle too, that could oppose Ngannou and the Gypsy King Tyson Fury, who has repeatedly expressed his desire to face the champion. Some of the public opinion wishes that the fight takes place on the African soil, like the original rumble, which at that time opposed the legend Cassius Lee, aka Muhammad Ali, against George Foreman in Zahir year 1974. In any case, this long waited return could be a boom for Ngannou to further win the heart of his Cameroonian fans in particular and his African fans in general. It is also suspected that his return to action will be quicker than expected based on his improving health and multiple trips for interviews. One thing is certain, all Francis fans will not fail to support him from America to Europe to his hometown of Batier. The champion will certainly also receive valuable support from his fellow African champs. His compatriot Carlos Takam, the Nigerian nightmare Kamaru Usman, and the star bender Israel Adesanya. The future is bright for our champion. Hopefully, his star will keep on shining. Expectations surrounding his return to the sports scene and regarding the rest of his career are at an all time high. We can only wish the best for him, especially in his choices. Because whatever the context, it is obvious today that the prospect of facing Francis Ngannou is synonymous with danger for anyone who dare to stand before him. You know what they say, mess with the bull, you get the horns. With the help of these few words, the whole team here at Breeze extends our sincere condolences to our champion for the recent loss of his uncle.